What is good guys and girls of YouTube? My name is Justin Omoe and I'm here with the video, the last video perhaps, of the SSL plugin bundle, you know, tutorial. This is on the SSL channel strips. This is for both the E channel, as you see here, the E, and the G channel. What's the difference between the E and G? Why is there an E and a G? That's because E is one version of a solid state logic board where G is another uh, version to higher up, I believe. Uh, because they got G, G plus, maybe F, I don't know, give me an A for 400. But now we're only focused on the E and the G channel because that is what, you know, Waves decided to put out and do. This looks pretty confusing, right? But don't worry, this is the easiest thing ever. As long as you remember, you know, the master bus as well as the channel, the EQ one, this is easy, okay? I'm not, I'm, uh, yeah. As long as you know how to connect flow charts, as long as you know how to understand what you heard before, if you've seen those videos, you'll be good. For starters, I'll show you an example with the snare. Uh, let me see if I got it. No, I don't have it set up. Let me right click. This is how it would sound with these snares. Mono E is going to be the black one. Mono G is the silver-ish color one. All right, I'm going to hit play, and you're going to see over here, I'll be flipping them over and just like that. Okay, so we're starting on E. Listen carefully. All right, so as you heard, it does sound like the E has less of a thump or a, I guess, a little bump into the bassy feel that is just the version the way the e channel feels in comparison to the g channel by the way these sounds are the same in terms of parameters all right let's go ahead and explain what these functions are so forth over here we have the filters this is going to be a high pass filter and a low pass filter this will help cut out some frequencies that you don't want in your sound. Definitely clean up your, you know, feel, your, your, your tone, your sculpt. This split button, I'll explain later. Remember this, all right? Next up, we're going over the high frequencies, just like the channel of the, the EQ channel. Where is it? In the kick. Remember this thing? If you've seen the last video, this is going to be the same thing here. The high frequency, high frequency. Basically, find your frequency that you want to adjust and adjust it. The only thing different here is uh, there's a, bu a bell button. What is this bell button? Well, this is kind of the same thing as having your cue over here all the way to the right in the bell shape. Why is it not a cue knob? That's not the way the SSL board was made. Next up, we have the high medium frequencies, which are the same thing here, except there's something different about these two. Notice over here, we have a button called HMF times three, where this one says bell. This is for the high medium frequencies times three. This is the same thing that I explained over in the EQ one, where if you have 4.5 set and then you press times three, it's 4.5 times three, which is four, eight, 12, five, three, 15. So it's like 13.5 kilohertz of a frequency to change. I explained this in the other video, so if you want to, you know, check that. If you haven't, go ahead and check it. The more the merrier. All right, so I'm sure you guys understand the rest of this. The low medium frequency is going to be a peaking knob for the low medium frequencies, just like the channel strip, or my bad, the EQ strip, and the low frequencies is going to be that same old, you know, heebie-jeebie there. Again, we have a LMF divided by three, so that is going to be this same button here. Is going to adjust uh, according to dividing by three with your math. Yeah. So that's pretty much easy, this whole little set, uh, side, because we talked about it before. The dynamic side is going to be a bit similar, just this first little section to the compressor from the Master Buzz compressor, the first one I talked about in the video series. Ratio compression is going to be the amount of ratio, which is here. So if I want to set that, it'll be like two. For every one or for every two decibels that come through from the threshold is going to compress it down to one there's something different about this though is that even though we have a release we have a fast attack switch instead of a attack button or knob 
in that case. Why? Why? Why, sir? Well, you know, it's trying to make the, the board look nice, I guess, fitting. There's a fast attack switch here because, you know, you want a slow attack, you want a fast attack. That's the only options they put on this, you know, strip. The release knob has more options now. Instead of 1.2 on the master bus, you could go all the way up to 4 over here. Instead of 0.4, which I had up here, you could go down to 0.1. That's the same thing over here, 0.1. So this compression side is the same thing here. Um, one more thing to note, there is no makeup gain in here. Why is there no makeup gain? The reason why is because this SSL, you know, channel strip, both of these are doing automatic gain compensation in easy terms is it's going to raise the gain itself based on the settings you set with the dynamics right here, the threshold, the ratio. Well, yeah, those two. So it's going to do its best to do the math and bring that gain back up for you even though we do have an input and an output fader, which I'll talk about later. Under the dynamics for compression, we have a expander or a gate um, function. Expanding is going to be kind of the opposite of compression where we're going to raise up the lower frequencies to match up with the highs. It's kind of like the opposite of compression, like I just said, but just know that, you know, you can use it as a gate, a noise gate, which is, Pretty ideal if you want to cut out sounds. Matter of fact, keep that on because we got it on over here. The threshold is going to be the same as the compressor. It's just the line of which if it goes higher or under, it will activate. For a noise gate, if the threshold, if the sounds are under the threshold, it will activate and destroy. But if you have sounds that are above the threshold line, it will turn the gate or turn the effect off. It's not going to cut off because that's what a noise gate does. By the way, if you are confused about anything I'm saying, but you're watching this still confused as hell, don't worry, I've made videos on compressions, noise gates, filters, EQ, all of that before. If you want, you could click the I button and you'll see you know, a whole playlist full of effects. Go wild, go crazy, that's where you're gonna unlock your inner keys. DJ Khaled will be jealous. But yeah, let's say you don't have a gate on, but you have expand. For the expand, it'll be just about the same where if it's under, you know, like negative 20, we're going to expand it. We're going to bring it up and the range knob here will, uh, you know, adjust how much we're going to expand if we're going to take those low sounds and bring them up. Not ideal for vocals if you have a lot of noise in your sound. Not ideal. Last two knobs here, we have a release and attack. Pretty much the same thing as a release and attack here, the fast attack, slow attack, as the compressor. I don't have to explain that. Notice I didn't go over these buttons here yet. Don't worry. I'll talk about them lastly. Lastly. Analog button. We know what this analog button does. If you've seen the other two videos, that's what it does. Maybe you should watch those videos and you'll understand what it does. All right, just playing. It gives harmonic distortion. That's as much I'll say in this video. This button here, again, is a phase reverse or phase inversion. It's going to do the opposite of what your signal is, just basically backwards. This works for, you know, like if your kick is hitting the opposite way, click it, you'll fix it. It's definitely ideal to, you know, study more in phase inversions later on. But for this, just know it'll flip it. If your sound sounds weird, just click it for now. If it sounds weird when it's clicked, then unclick it. We have an in knob and we have an out fader. We have an input and an output button here. What are these? Input is going to be the signal's amplification before you put it into this whole thing in the beginning, in the starting. So let's say you have a low signal and it's like barely noticeable. Raise the gain. That way you'll, you know, raise the signal so we could be able to compress it according to these knobs here and, you know, frequencies, how you want to sculpt it, etc. Now, how would you be able to tell what the input is? You could click here and this will monitor your input sounds. This is not going to be the output. If you want the output, you could click on the output or just click, you know, again and it'll switch. This way you can see the input when it's coming in the meter and you'll be able to be like okay i don't want it all the way at zero let's low it down some and for the output see you know kind of the same thing you see the output the output would be in a different scale format however remember if i spoke about it yeah i did in the first one the master bus compressor video 
that is going to be in a different signal. Um, let me just click that. It will be in a uh, decibel called dBU, which is root mean square units. It's going to be a averaging of the decibel full scale, which is like if you see your big meter here, bop, bop, this is full scale. If I had a RMS scale on it, it would look way lower. It'll be like down here in the same range where I'm speaking right now. But just know if you go over zero, lower it down. If you're way down here, I suggest raising it up. All right, now that we went over all of these meters, we haven't went over these four buttons here, or five. The split, the bypass, bypass channel out, dynamic SC. Don't worry, I'll be going over them, and yeah, it's not too hard. First of all, the bypass. This is going to be a button that allows you to, you know, turn off the EQ. If you want the EQ bypass, it turns it off. For comparison reasons the same thing would be applied to the filter I believe if you press bypass it will bypass the filter or turn it off this is so you could compare your sound with it off with it on with it off with it on if you want to turn it off for some stupid reason and leave it off you're lost or I don't know why you would do that maybe you just want more dynamics rather than a master bus compressor you could do so how about the dynamics to the bypass basically turn off the dynamics which is all this the compressor the expander gate, that's it. If you want to turn that off, you just want the EQ here. Maybe you got a better tone out of the E or the G series than you have in the channel strip. You can have these on. All right, here is the confusing, yet yeah, it's not confusing, part. If you understand signal flow or how to make a flow chart, this is going to be rather easy to understand. DYNSC, what is DYN or FLT DYNSC? This is known as dynamic sidechain or filter dynamic sidechain. For the E series, dynamic sidechain will basically take your filter and your EQ and put it in another signal. All right, what this means is that you have one signal for the dynamics going straight through, meaning your, your audio signal will get compressed. And then you have your other signal where your audio signal, instead of being compressed, it will go into the filter and the EQ, and it will be mixed with the compressor. Think of it as adding those two together rather than having compression first. Like I said before, compression, and then it'll filter, then EQ. Think of it as the compression stuff plus filter and EQ put together. All right? It may sound confusing. Maybe I can make another video explaining this whole situation, but just know that it'll add those two together rather than doing compression first, then EQ, or my bad, then filter, then EQ. For filter dynamic sidechain, it'll be just the filter. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So instead of doing compression, filter, EQ, the thing it will do is have one signal for compression and then EQ. So it's compressing EQ, kind of like how we basic done it basically before and the how to mix vocals, we compress it and then EQ. But after that, it will be added with a filtered sound. It's pretty stupid, but don't worry about that. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah. It's going to be good if you want to DS your sounds. So if you want to have your less syllabants, you could press these buttons. It's not gonna affect it because I don't have anything in my mic. I'll show you an example of the vocals having this dynamic side chain. It kind of sounds like it destroys it, but don't worry. I'll show you. I'm gonna hit play. What about for it? I got loads of shit that I could listen. I could always do it. And I'll turn it on. Oh wait. What about for it? I got loads of shit that I could listen. I could always do it. So I'm gonna hit play and play off and on, off and off, until you can see the difference. What about for it? I got loads of shit that I could listen. I could always do that. I won't need the like to you. I don't need a player too. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Don't mind the little cut sound. It, it's just my voice. But that is how the dynamic side chain will work. It sounds like it's eating away the high frequencies. That's just DSing. You could raise the input afterwards or the output and fix that. So let me try that. What about for it? I got loads of shit that I could listen. I could always do that. I won't need the like to you. I don't need a player too. Yeah. What about for it? I got loads of shit that I could listen. I could always do. 
So yeah, as you see there, it's taking out the sibilance, the s s sounds. If I put it back on, what a buffer it! I got loads of shit that I can listen. I can always do. That won't need the like to you. I don't need a. There you go. Now that we got the most confusing thing in the world out of the way, let's go into the less confusing thing in the world. With the split button off, like I said, the original signal will be dynamics. It'll compress and stuff. Then it'll filter and then it'll do the EQ. If you press this split button up here, what it'll do is first do filter and then compress and then the EQ. That's why I love putting the split on, especially for your vocals. This way we'll be able to take out bass because remember, we don't really use bass in our voice and it'll allow the compressor to be more responsive. So if you have sounds that you wanna cut out first and then compress, click this split button and it'll take that, do the filter, then compress, then EQ. And the last button here, the CH out, this means CH out, channel it out. So what this button will do is instead of dynamics and then the filter and then the EQ, if you hit this button, it'll do the EQ or the filter and EQ and then the dynamics. So EQ it and then compress it. If you have the channel out and the split, I believe it'll do EQ first, then the filter, then the dynamics. If you have the split off, it'll be filter, EQ, dynamics. If you are confused to the point of, I don't know what life is anymore, don't worry, Waves has a PDF for you know how to use it. They have a flow chart on there that could help you with that. Yeah, I've been checking it, double checking it just so I don't give you wrong information, even though I knew it by myself, but yeah. All right, guys and girls, this was a long video, I believe. 34 minutes, so I'm gonna chop the hell out of this. Thank you guys and girls for watching this. If you have any questions, be sure to ask and I'll be, you know, hopefully I can answer them. If not, other people can answer them for you. That's why we got the comment section. So thank you for everyone who does help others out. And yeah, subscribe if you are new. Like the video if you like it. My name is Justin Omoe. I teach people for every Saturday. With that being said, peace. I'm out.